Hello everyone, my name is Amber. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Amber Reads Romance. Today I am actually starting a vlog. I just decided I needed to do it for this book that I am about to read. And that is Hills of Shivers and Shadows by Pam Godwin. This is her new release. I got the arc and let me just tell you, I squealed like a nerdy fan that I am <laughs> when I got the email and everything. I was so excited because I didn't think I was gonna get it. And I'm just so thankful to Pam Godwin for giving me an arc. Um, but this is gonna be one of her darkest romance yet. At least that's what she says. I read her like intro because I just had to read her like note to us in the beginning. And she does say that this is one of her darkest romances. I'm not reading the trigger, checking the triggers or anything. I'm just gonna go in kind of blind. Um, I do know that it is a captor captive uh, romance between I think four men in the Alaskan wilderness or something and it's like she's stuck out there with these four men and captor captive and I believe this is gonna be a trilogy so this first one will end on a cliffhanger so I am really excited I saw Jen from the book refuge talking about how crazy it is and I thought you know what like I think that's the perfect book to do a vlog for um, I am probably going to post this a couple weeks after the book's release because I do do a lot of spoilers in my vlogs, so I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. Um, I will probably mention spoilers before I talk, but most likely not. So I might go too into detail on this book that you might not want to get that at this point yet. And I do apologize if you're not interested, come back later and watch my spoiler vlog. Um, but I do tend to gush or talk about a lot of details in my vlogs. Um, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you can, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm gonna start diving into this romance. I do have I'm also currently reading Dragonfly and Amber um, for the Outlander read along and that is another huge book. This one's also like over 700 pages. But so I'm gonna be bouncing between these two because these are like my priority books of the month and they're my biggest books. So I need to get them read right away. So I will check back in with you guys in a bit once I've read, read a little bit more of this except for the prologue. I did read the prologue and it already has me hooked. So I will wait to give you guys more info once I'm further into the book, and I'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, just checking back in here. I have been bouncing between Dragonfly and Amber and this book, and because I was cleaning the house and everything, so I might kind of look a little frazzled here, but I do want to get a check-in because I did get about 30% through uh, Hills of Shivers and Shadows, and I'm loving it. I'm very intrigued. We have a very interesting setup um, and quite a few characters to go through because this is gonna probably be, I'm guessing for sure, a reverse harem romance. Um, so let's dive into what the intro is so far. Um, we have Frankie and she is this beautiful redhead. She's a nurse. I think she's a trauma nurse um, and she actually lives kind of like on this private island with her really billionaire husband. Um, so her house is like got all the, you know, codes to get in. They have like a sensor on their dock so people can't just arrive unannounced and all of that. Um, in the beginning of this, we have Frankie in an argument with her husband because he um, told her from the beginning that he never wanted kids and she is pregnant. And so she wants to talk about it. She's fighting with him and he's saying, get rid of it. Like, I don't want kids. You know I don't want kids. There's no getting around that. So she's pretty upset. He promises not to like, he not to go to his business dinner and come home by a specific time so they can talk about this. And Frankie's just very distraught. Um, she wants this baby and she kind of knows he's probably not gonna step up. So she actually had already like kind of packed her stuff on her own like boat that she has to leave the island um, because she does not want to give up this baby and she's almost thinking about leaving her husband if he doesn't come in time. While all this is going on, we have Denver and Denver is shown up naked. 
Um, he swam in this cold ass ocean to get to this island because of the sensors in the docks. He's been stalking her for like a couple years, it turns out, um, which you find out later on in the story. Um, he has cameras in every room of her house. He has cameras in her husband's like office, at his job. Um, he knows the codes to get into the house. So already you're like, how does this guy this well prepared? Um, but anyways, he has to swim naked to show up there. And then he has like uh, changes into his clothes. They're in like a waterproof bag. And he goes in to capture her. And she fights. She really fights back hard. Um, at one point, she fights so hard that like he she gets dro dropped in the ocean. So she's soaking wet. Um, but he gets her and he has to like take her in her boat to his yacht then he has to get rid of her boat um and he has to like drug her off and on um while he's traveling and hit it through the sea on his big ship or yacht i'm sorry and then he ends up drugging her again and putting her in like this kind of almost like coffin type thing but it's really not it looks like it's stuff for like when he would get fish and supplies because he lives like further no I think it's north like arctic um Alaska where nobody knows where he lives it's in the middle of nowhere and the only way to get there is by plane and so when she wakes up she's on a plane over like pretty much nothing there's like not even woods around it's just pure ice and snow and like it's like nobody around so he's like if you kill me or hurt me like we're both gonna die like there's no way out of this so he takes her to his home and he has three sons so this is where it gets kind of crazy she's just freaking out she's thinking like what am i like gonna be their sex toy are they gonna beat me and rape me and what's gonna go on and she's freaking out so a little bit about each of these characters. Denver is the father and he's like kind of described as like a Brad Pitt lookalike, gorgeous, but like more fit. Um, but he's very scary because he's literally like stalked her and kidnapped her. And um, then we have his sons. So first we have Leonid, um, goes by Leo too. And I think he's the oldest one, and he is kind of, like, described as almost Viking looking like. He'll have his hair in, like, twisted Viking braids and stuff like that. He's got different colored eyes, and he's, like, immediately angry. There's two of the, two of the sons that are, like, pissed off that she's there. The other one we have is uh, Kodiak, and he is, like, dark-haired, broody, angry he's like described as like the scary one he doesn't even talk to her he won't look at her he's pissed off she's there and then we have Wolfson and he is like I think he's the youngest he kind of dresses like emo-ish and like dresses you like really weird you know and kind of creative and I think he's more emo style but like gorgeous described that he could be like a model he's so gorgeous so these four gorgeous men happen to have her um, she is dead set on getting away and she accidentally, she actually gets sneak supplies in the back of the plane before she has to get out under her coat and she actually finds like a hatchet and so she's planning to run the second she can. She does and she, I don't know where she thinks she's going to run to because there's like one, one like cottage looking house like a ways down. But, like, where are you going to go after that? And these people can get to you fast. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. But she's in fight or flight. And she actually knocks out Wolfson and runs for the uh, snowmobile and starts going. Unfortunately, not everything's snow right now. Um, the winter hasn't hit. So she's, like, literally off-roading on the snowmobile. It crashes. And she ends up getting pinned underneath it. And she loses the baby. So there's trigger warnings for, you know, miscarriage, loss of baby. She's heavily bleeding and she like gives up at this point where, you know, she right like blames herself because she's like, if I wouldn't have done this, my baby would have lived and I killed my baby. And so she's very upset. It was like the one thing that was like kind of keeping her going. So she has a lot of recovery that she has to do. Um, and she's sleeping in Kodiak's bed and he's sleeping on the couch. And so she's up there and it takes like weeks for her to heal, you know, over like a month um, to heal because she had some broken ribs and stuff. And obviously to recover from the miscarriage, none of the guys have tried anything sexual with her. Um, 
so she doesn't know. She's like constantly like, how many women have you kidnapped? How many? Because they, they, and they had like different moms. Um, at one point, like uh, Leo had like this wound on his stomach and she finds out that Wolfson's mom stabbed him. And so they might've had like different moms and she's just like freaking out. Like how many women have you taken? How many people have you killed? What are you guys going to do with me? Like, what do you want? And you're kind of getting this underlying feeling that like, you know, Denver has a plan. Um, and like, I, I don't know if he wants her for all of them or for just his sons, but it sounds like it didn't work in the past. And like the two guys that supposedly hate her, when you get, you get all of their POVs and you could tell they're like simps for her. Like they're already obsessed with her, but they don't want to be obsessed with her because it'll tear them all apart. And so I don't know what Denver's goal is here because I'm sure it's something more than just what I thought with it being Pam Godwin and everything. But so, so she is like slowly like kind of getting to know each of them. Um, she's, you know, turned on by them, but feels guilty about being turned on by them. She feels guilty because she was married and loved her husband. So there's a lot of conflicting things going on. Um, there's at one point where they let her have like a gun and like go um, walking around and stuff. And she found this like almost like a fireplace out in the middle of nowhere and she found like a human skull and bones in it so she freaks out and like brings it back and like throws it on their dinner table and so denver's like you, that's punishment like that was the last of our food you didn't need to do that and instead of punishing her he's gonna punish one of his sons and stab them with his knife through the hand and so he was gonna do it to wolfson but kodiak shoves him aside he's like no me um, and so she's freaking out. She's begging him to stop. She's like, I didn't want any of them to get hurt. So I don't know if Denver did this as a way for her to kind of trauma bond with them or feel like they're on her side. Um, because when you're in their POV, they're like, she thinks she's a victim. Like we're like victims like her and we're not. She has no idea what she's in for. So I don't know. It's a, it's very mysterious. You don't know what's going on, but you can see her starting to build like a bond with each of them. Um, you know, so I am very intrigued. So far, it's not that dark to me because I've read way worse dark stuff from Pam Godwin, but I'm sure it's coming around the corner here. So, um, that's it. That's, I think mean, I've, I can go on and on, but I don't want to make this a super long vlog like I always do. Um, so I will check back in with you guys once I get like halfway through the book. All right. See you on the next clip. Hey guys, um, so I am just giving my check-in here. I got to about like 55% last night. Um, had to go to bed. I was still like sucked into this book and I didn't want to stop reading, but I had to uh, get ready for, go to bed for work. But so I have a lot to cover. Um, a lot of stuff goes down. I believe I ended off where Denver left to go do a trip. And so now Frankie is at home alone with the his sons. And she is trying to kind of get them on her side. Um, kind of showing that like, we're all on the same side against him. We need to figure out how to fly this plane so we can get out of here. Because that's the thing is he's the only one that can fly the plane. He doesn't have any of his kids know. So they're dependent on him. And that's pretty effed up. And like if he died or something on one of these trips or something bad happened, like his kids would die out there basically. So she's like, we need to figure it out. Um, she's trying to kind of bond with them and get them on her side. Um, right before he left, that was the whole thing where she got, did a, a had a punishment, but to punish her, he punished basically one of his own sons and had put the knife through one of his son's hands. And that's like, I think what they called like the kin punishment or whatever, and so that event kind of brought her closer to them by like helping, she helped um, like take care of Cody's hand and all that kind of stuff. And they saw a different side to her. So the Cody and um, Leonid or Leo 
um, were the ones that were like really hateful towards her. And that pretty much changes here. Leo fully comes onto her, pushes her up against a wall at one point and is like kissing her, forcibly kissing her and like bites her lip. But she's like, doesn't want any of it because she's a really loyal wife and she's married and she loves her husband. And so she doesn't want that to happen. Um, also, uh, Cody starts sleeping back in his room. So they're sharing a room. They're not in the same bed, but they're sharing a room and he starts to make out with her and kiss her and stuff. And I'm telling you her chemistry with like Cody is super hot. I think he's like my favorite. I always like the broody angry boys, you know, and that's definitely Cody. Um, so, um, Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so much happened that I'm like trying to remember everything. So one big thing that happened is she happened to hear like a woman moaning, moaning at night. And she kind of went to the library and saw through the door that Leo was watching like a home video of him basically being assaulted because he was young at the time, very young, um, by Wolfson's mom, because they all had different moms. Um, and I don't remember if it was before this. It might have been before this, but they had ended up showing her like this box of like kids clothes. And at the bottom of it, it had five uh, driver's license of different women that basically Denver has kidnapped throughout the years. And he didn't like it. I'm not even sure if Denver is these like kid's father. It doesn't seem like he is. It seems like he kidnapped women and their kids because he brought them there when they were like two or three already. So, but they're told that they're all related somehow. So I don't know. It's such like all these mysteries going on in this book. So anyways, so she happened to know that, um, Wolfson's mom was kind of crazy. She was like the only one that really wanted to be there and was very sexual. And so she actually would have sex with Leo at a very young age. And so she sees this video where he's kind of looks like he's going to jerk off to it, but he's not jerking off. He's like watching this video of her like abusing him when he was a younger child and so she feels awful about that. And he like ends up being like stay there and like jerks off to her. And so she kind of has this more insight to like how fucked up this family is. And like she also sees all these like scars on the back of like Cody's back and is like, what has your dad done to you? So there's just a lot of fucking shit going on here. Um, the other thing going on is Cody needs to go hunting. They need to get meat for the winter. It's about to be winter. And if they don't get enough meat, they could starve. And, but he had a wound to his hand, so he can't use his crossbow really well. So he was going to take her with him. And then Leah was like, well, you're not going alone with her. Um, so you can take me too. So that was kind of like their plan. Um, but then Denver comes home. And Denver, like, brings her, like, a bouquet of flowers. And she's just like, I don't want this. Like, and then he shows her a video of her husband cheating on her, screwing a chick in his office. And she kind of, like, makes him play it for her over and over. And she's, like, devastated. And it kind of, like, breaks her. And those sons are, like, all pissed that he did this, but he's very manipulative, and he wants her to be, like, move on past the husband. And so she ends up pretty depressed. She's out on her own one night, and Leo comes out to her, and he, like, apologizes for bullying her. He, like, doesn't want to see her in pain and all this stuff, and they start, like, making out. They go back to, like, his tool area, whatever, and, like, they start to mess around, like, he goes down on her, all of that. He's, like, like, she's begging him to, like, have sex with her, but he doesn't, he stops himself. And there's this thing that, like, they're not allowed to touch her or the woman. They're off, like, you're not allowed to touch the women. So there's something going on, like, called the devil's bargain, and they won't tell her what this is. And so it's, like, if he has sex with her, there would be, like, huge ramifications. Um, so it ends up not happening, but Cody overheard it and him and, um, Leo get in a huge fist fight and 
Denver catches them fighting, so he, like, knows what's up. This guy is super smart. He's super creepy, and he knows something happened. He literally smells her cunt, like, on his face, basically, and so he, like, he knew that they were going to try and take her on the hunting trip, um, you know, and he told them, no, that's not going to happen. She's staying here. So, like, after that whole fight and confrontation, she had gone in, and then she starts getting, like, really sick, and earlier that night, it it was previously brought up, like, he made her, like, Denver made her, like, uh, bourbon, because she loves her bourbons, and now all of a sudden she's sick, so I knew, like, I was like, he drugged her or did something to her to make her sick, so she couldn't go on this trip. So now Cody... And Denver have to go on this trip and hunt alone without her. And they keep freaking out about what's going to happen with Wolfson. Wolfson will fall for the devil's bargain, the devil's bargain. I don't know what the fuck it is. And so they end up having to just leave her. And she's sick with, um, you know, Wolfson trying to take care of her. But... I don't know, you guys. It's crazy. There's so much going on in this book. You don't know what this devil's bargain is and what the hell is going on. Like, why? What is Denver up to? I mean, I know for sure he freaking poisoned her with something to make her, like, sick. Um, But I don't know what's going on. (laughs) This book is crazy. It hasn't gotten as dark as I was expecting yet. I mean, there hasn't even been six. There's been no like dubious consent or even any of that. So that's kind of what I was expecting, like right out of the gate with a capture captive, but I'm loving it. It's Pam Godwin. Her writing is beautiful. It sucks you in. She's such an amazing writer. She's the, one of my favorites of all time. So I'm going to, um, read for a little bit and then hopefully I'll check in with you guys, um, to see what's going on with these what's going to happen now that she's going to be at home alone with Denver and then Wolfson who Wolfson, by the way, is like kind of like her best friend. Like she loves him, but like cares about him like as a friend and he like wants to be with her. They all like worship her and they all want to be with her. So it's crazy because they're very possessive of her too. So anyways, I'm talking too long on this. So I will follow up with you guys in a bit. Hey guys, so actually I was reading at work. Um, I just got home, but I have to do a check-in immediately. I didn't get that much further into the book at work, but shit just went down and I have to do a check-in because it was dark. It's finally getting to that dark spot and it was very disturbing. So, okay, so Frankie is at home alone with... uh, Denver and Wolfson. And Wolfson has to go get the last of like the blueberries. He's been shirking his chores for days because she's been sick for like throwing up for four days. And he's like, you need to pretend that you're still sick. You need to pretend like you're still sick because, you know, we need to keep Denver away from you and he won't bother you if you're sick. And so he goes away to go do like get the do his chores, get the last blueberries before the winter. And she, um, ends up like talking to Denver and he, he basically knew she's been faking because guess what you guys, he did poison her with that drink to make it so she'd be sick for four days and he knows it's out of her system. So she's faking. So he had literally brought her water and, um, drugged it with like Rohypnol. So she passes out, wakes up, and she is tied to the bed by her wrists and legs, spread eagle, naked, and he's just standing there. And he's like, I've been waiting years for this, blah, blah, blah. And then he's just waiting. And he's waiting till Wolfson comes in. And he's like, Wolfson's like, I'll do it. And she freaks out thinking, like, Wolfson's going to rape her instead. And that's not the case. This is the devil's bargain. And he basically takes it for her so she doesn't get raped by um, Denver. So, like, this is what Denver's been after this whole time is, like, in order for her, like, he wants them to form an attachment to her so that they don't get, so she doesn't get raped and then they will give themselves to her. 
I mean, give themselves to Denver. So he basically, like, has sex with Wolfson. And Wolfson's, like, leaning over the bed and, like, in between her legs and, like, holding on to her really tight. And she's just crying because she's gagged. She's tied up. She can't provide any sort of comfort or tell him not to do this. And, you know, this is what the brothers are trying to, like, put off and not let happen. And so she's, like, freaking devastated. And she's like, how long has he been doing this? Does he do it to all of you guys? And he's like, I'm not special. He's like, he's done it to every one of us. But, like, Cody's his favorite. Which is like, ooh. And... You know, and then he finishes with him and he's like, okay, you can go ahead and get your, like, reward. But she doesn't want to have sex with him because she's like, we can't have sex after that kind of, like, brutality. And so she gets upset. He leaves and kind of goes to bed and she just kind of journals out stuff. So she ends up sneaking back to his room to kind of find out what's what the hell is going on. So I just had to do a quick check-in, even though, like, I didn't get that much further in the book because I was like, this is sick. Like, he's not, he may not be blood related to them, but, like, he raised them as his kids, but and he kidnapped them. So it's like he's been grooming them because Wolfson said, like, the first time was when he was, like, eight years old. So it's so gross. And Wolfson said it's, like, not about like boys or girls it's about the size and like and then she had remembered a conversation she had with one of the brothers and they're like you're tiny you know you you're weak you know you're t- you're super small like petite and and so it's like that's why he picked her um because he's really into that like the size you guys, this is crazy. So Pam Godwin's doing it again. She's shocked me because I did not see that coming. I was kind of wondering why Denver wasn't that interested in her, never tried anything sexual with her. And then this is why. So I got to read you guys. I need to finish this tonight because I have so much to read this month and this is a big book and I just need to finish it. So I will check in back with you probably when I finish the book, unless something crazy happens again and I want to do another update. All right, see you in a bit. Hey guys, so I am here doing my final check-in on this amazing book, The Hills of Shivers and Shadows by Pam Godwin. It was a roller coaster. So much happens in this book. I mean, it is a long book. It's over 700 pages and it really put you through it. Um, And I have so much to talk about, but um, I couldn't put it down. I didn't want to stop reading last night, but unfortunately I was like 12, almost 12 o'clock and I had to get up at 530 and I was like, maybe I think like 85% through the book. So I just had to give up and go to bed. So today at work, I was like sneaking, reading a little bit and reading on my break and my lunch And I finally finished it. And this book, you guys, is insane. It is crazy. Pam Godwin is a genius. She's the best, the best dark romance author. And um, on my previous clip, I did tell you about The Devil's Bargain. Um, and that honestly was shocking to me. Like I didn't see that coming because I thought, you know, Maybe, you know, there was some weird stuff going on. Why isn't he sexually into her yet? Um, But I never saw him in the book, like, really creeping on his son sexually. So I thought he had just wanted a woman for his sons to share. And then a woman just so that he could kind of control them and have them still want to be out there with him in the middle of nowhere. That's where my head was at. And boy, was I wrong. So the fact that he was literally like loves his sons, but really he that's sick. Um, And he wanted to be able to have sex with them because he abhors violence, yet he's raping them. Get your head wrapped around that. Um, So he needed a way like and leverage to be able to control them so that he could be able to have sex with his kids, the sons. Um, so anyways, that was crazy. So I have a lot to just briefly, I'm not briefly, probably not briefly, you know how I am, to kind of go over because I basically haven't done a check-in since that. And that was like, I think 60% through the book. 
and a lot happens, you guys. So um, after that whole interaction where he's like having sex with Wolf, like, and has her tied up and all that kind of stuff, and her and Wolf kind of bond, um, she ends up taking a gun up to Denver's room and is like, acts like she's going to shoot him. Um, she does shoot him, but it doesn't have a bullet in it. And she, like, she acts like she was going to shoot his dick, which I thought was hilarious. Um, but she basically makes a deal with him. Like, you can have me. You can do whatever you want to me. I will submit to you completely. Um, but you can't touch your kids anymore. You can't touch them. You can't abuse them. You can't be sexual with them anymore. And so he agrees to this. Um, he also wants her to have sex with his sons and show her proof that he's having th that they've come inside her and all of that. Um, he has no idea that she um, was given like the birth control, so his whole thing is like getting her knocked up too. So it takes a few weeks for Kodiak and um, Le Leonid to come back from their hunting trip. And so by the time they get back, they've, like, she's been basically submitting, but really being raped by him, by uh, Denver for weeks. And she's kind of pushed Wolfs in a way because she just kind of felt like she had to and has completely shut off her emotions and kind of looks like she's given up. Even though she hasn't fully given up, she still wants to figure out how to fly this plane and all of that. Well, uh, Kodiak is the one to kind of get her out of that. He ends up finding her when she went out running on her own and everything. And he basically, like, they have a talk, they kiss and stuff. And then he actually kind of, I almost said it was going to be primal play, but they didn't, like, do anything sexual. But he tells her she needs to run. And so he chases her down, and then he gives her a spanking. And it helps her unleash all and like, all her emotions that she'd been holding back, all the trauma that she was, like, burying deep inside and the wall she was building up, it helped her unleash that. And so it was a beautiful, like, scene and an emotional release for her. And he, um, like, they end up on their way back getting attacked by a huge wolf. She almost is thinking, like, a dire wolf, like Game of Thrones. And he's basically trying to save her and full on like attacking this wolf with like nothing. And he's getting pretty brutalized. He gets his leg all jacked up, bitten and everything. And she ends up shooting the wolf with um, his crossbow. And it's still not die like fight stopping. So she ends up like killing the wolf with the knife, like stabbing him multiple times in his neck. And so it's a pretty brutal scene, and she's freaking out. Luckily, she has a flare because they're a couple miles away from the house, and she can't drag him. He's completely out. He's had a lot of blood loss, and she's freaking out. She needs to get him back. Luckily, they see the flare, and they come with, like, the snowmobile, and they get him back, and she's able to use her, you know, she is, like, a trauma nurse, so she's able to do what she's able to what she can do with the supplies they have. And luckily, you know, Denver steals a lot of medical supplies and stuff. So they were able to pretty treat him pretty well. And so she's watching him and stressing out about Cody. And she ends up sneaking off at one point with her and Leonid. And they basically finally have sex. Um, and so as Kodiak's healing and everything, she is like making out with the other brothers to... Um, Leo wants her all to himself, but, like, she's, she eventually has the talk of, like, I don't, I'm not going to be monogamous after my husband cheated on me, and I'm attracted to each of you. She kind of treats Wolfson more as, like, a, like, a best friend, like, almost friend zone, and you can tell he's really bitter about it because they never have sex or anything. Um, obviously, Cody is pretty injured, and he has to heal back from that. So the guys were pretty upset with her for the deal, and they basically tell her that deal is off. You are not doing that. You're not going to, you know, suffer like that anymore. This also leads to a trouble where um, Denver is supposed to go um, 
sorry, he is supposed to go into town to get supplies before winter. It's like the storm, the winter is about to hit and they won't be able to fly out anymore and they need to get the supplies to survive over the winter. They did hunting, but they didn't have as much as they needed and it's not enough to help them survive for the winter. The problem is, is he's refusing to go unless she submits to him again. And so they won't let her do that. And so he doesn't go. Like he does not go to get supplies. And so it's like the standoff where he's willing to have them like all starve because he's holding his ground like that. So it's pretty crazy. So um, they're starving. They're going through it. Um, and then Denver decides to turn off the power. He's the only one. He's an inventor. He has all this stuff that he ha he only he knows how to fix and maintain. And this is part of the reason these men have his kids. His kids have never killed him or anything is because he, if he kills them, like they have no way out. There's only the plane to be able to get away to, you know, leave the middle of nowhere and get supplies and survive. And he's the only one that knows how to work these, like, inventions that he's made. So he basically turns it off. Um, and they had already been planning to kind of capture him. And they were going to, like, build this um, kind of like a cell door that they could put on the outside of a, like, whatever room they were going to do, and they were going to, like, basically kidnap him and put him in that. So they end up doing this, um, but, like, Dem and, but they do it out where his generator is, and he refuses to fix it, and he's out there, like, pretty much freezing. They do have some, you know, firewood and everything in there for him, but, like, He's refusing to turn the power, fix the power, and he's staying in there like that. So um, then we have the other guys have to go, um, basically Wolf and um, Leo have to go get coal and stuff. So they have to go on a trip. They're all starving. They barely can get by because they're not get. they're like really on rations. And so it's just um, Frankie and, um, and Cody and things are not going good. She's tried to like talk to Denver to try and get through to him and it really wasn't going anywhere he's a true psychopath and so all of a sudden like Cody disappears and doesn't come back when he's supposed to and he had gone out there to basically do the same thing where he was going to offer up his body um so that he would turn the power back on and let them go and fly them out and he like she had to shoot the door so she could get in there because it was barricaded and try to stop him from doing this and the thing is is like Denver was like even more obsessed with Cody Cody would never submit to him and let him have sex with him like he would fight it the whole time when he would try to rape them so like Cody's tied up things go downhill fast um she gets pretty pissed because he's like touching Cody and triggering her and she ends up shooting him in the leg where it's gonna he's gonna bleed out pretty bad and she's like tell me how to turn the power back on and he's giving her fucking movie quotes and fucking with her instead of giving it to her and she like kind of loses it on him and like beats him like to death and like almost to death and she finds out that he um he basically tells her you weren't a random. I didn't just pick you because I saw you at the hospital. I picked you because you're married to my brother. He stole everything from me and I took from him. And so she finds out that her husband is actually Denver's brother and that there was another brother. But she doesn't know who the brother was. Is it one of these kids that he basically stole? Is that another one of the brothers? You don't know. Because guess what? He bleeds out and dies. And now they don't have the answer to like, they don't have a way out with the plane. They don't have a way to fix the power. They're fucked. They're, like, they're going to die out there. And so, it is crazy. It's not good. Wolfson comes back, and he's been deteriorating a lot mentally. And he's just like, what's the point? Like, we're dead. We are dead. Whatever we do, there's no way out of this. We're dead. And so, she's staying with him while the other guys are getting rid of Denver's dead body. And um, she wakes up and Wolfson's gone. And this is where things get crazy, too, because she finds him and he's out at, like, the cliff and Cliff's edge. And he's basically saying, like, yeah, I'm 
I'm not going to starve here. I'm going to take my life. And she's begging for him not to do it because she was in that place at one point too and she got out of it. And, and he basically is going to take her out with him. He's like, I love you and I want you with me. And so he was like about to shoot her. And like right, he actually did fire the gun and Kodiak ends up shooting him with an arrow in his hand so he misses. But then like the other guys are holding up guns and the crossbow on him and they're like, and she's like, no, no, no. Like she's trying to like de-escalate the situation. And Wilson's like, no, like I'm going. So he basically just steps off the cliff and kills himself. And Kodiak tries to go down to the river to find him, but he couldn't find his body. He was washed away. So that's kind of where we're leaving it at the end of this book because they're, like, stuck in the middle of winter with no food, no power. They have to try and figure out how to get the power on. He did give them some kind of weird, like, riddle type of thing of how they can get the power fixed. So who knows? But my mind was blown, you guys. Because, okay, this was said that it was going to be a white shoes romance. And Pam even said that in the beginning of her thing, that book three is, ends in a white shoes H-E-A. So now we're left with these two deaths that happen at the end. I figured the white shoes was going to be her and the three brothers. But now one of the brothers is gone, so that's an MFM or MMF if that leads to that. And so it's like, how is this going to be a white shoes? Or maybe they're just saying that but because they didn't want to give things away in this book, so it's not fully a white shoes romance. I don't know, you guys. I am so excited to continue this book. Um, the series because this was a very long book but I couldn't put it down and I think it's so well done and I felt like every page was needed. Um, there's such great character development. Everything this heroine goes through and the, what she discovers, the reveals with these poor brothers and what they've been through. All the women that have been killed, you know, and taken. Um, not necessarily all killed but like died out there or killed themselves and it's just so tragic and so I felt like it needed to be that long and I'm completely okay with that just know it's a long book but it'll suck you in I think it's so freaking good so I don't know um there was a chapter that had her husband's POV so I was like is her husband gonna come into play later and be part of this white shoes I don't know. I don't know how that could happen, but I just think it's amazing. I think Pam Godwin is one of the best authors out there. Um, I think she writes really beautifully, and she manages to take you through, like, an emotional story through um, dark subject matter and put you through all the feels, and you can trust her that the journey is going to be good. It's going to take you on a roller coaster, and it'll leave you happy, hopefully. But I absolutely love this. I think I'm going to give this five stars. Um, and I would probably say like three, three and a half chilies. Some of the stuff is disturbing because it's bringing up like rape and stuff. So be aware of that. There are so many triggers in this book. Um, so just check your triggers. I've already brought up a million in this, this vlog. So, but I am absolutely like blown away by this. Um, I think this was a phenomenal book. And she's the best dark romance author out there. So I would highly recommend it. Um, if you if you watch this video, um, I know I talked way too long and I gave away so many spoilers. So I don't even know if people are going to make it to the end of this video. We'll see how it goes editing because I have no idea how this is going to come out. But I absolutely loved it. And so thank you so much for watching this. If you can, um, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Like and comment down below. Let me know if you've read this, what you thought, any of your thoughts on the MMF, like white shoes. Let me know. Um, anyways, you guys, thank you so much. And I will see you on the next one.